I'm so excited to show you guys what I've got wrapped in here. Um, I have created a journal, and I'll tell you about it more in a minute and how it's been made. But when I made this great big heavy journal, I realised that I should probably show you what you could fill in it. So I did a few entries, and then I then realised it would help if some of my friends and heroes put their entries in as well. And it has just returned back, having been on the most amazing tour of the country. I've got some really exciting pages in here and I'm inviting you to come and have a look. So here's the journal, all wrapped up a bit like they would have done back in the day when these um, books were called commonplace books. Everybody would have protected it by wrapping it in fabric. Um, the book has been made in Jaipur with a girl called Pretty who works with a paper making factory and she turns disused bits of t-shirt fabric into beautiful, beautiful paper. And then together we've worked on a really stunning cover that she's hand block printed. We've got two different designs in two different colorways. This one's called Cherry Cake and comes in pink. And this has been traveling the countryside and I'm really excited to open it. Okay. So as I said, this paper's made from unwanted t-shirt fabric and it, it's just the loveliest thing to draw on. First entry in the book is by Polly Fern, absolutely incredible ceramicist mainly, although she now lends her hands to so many more things. I know there's a similar design as this just appearing on pajamas recently, but her use of colour, her skills in drawing are just incredible. And Polly, we love this. Next entry is by an incredible artist. She's called Debbie George. She did a few, she did this pencil sketch for me in April. And then she did this lovely painting down in Cornwall. She's more well known for her vases of flowers that she often draws on a, a wooden square with a sort of wallpaper design in the background. They're so pretty. Next up's one that I did. Um, this was the first entry I did when I was trying to show the book. And I wrote it in, here on the side in March, 24th of March. And it says, it really felt like spring today. I'm high on the sunshine and creep up to my studio barefoot to really cap off an amazing weekend with a quick print. I'm rushed and thoughtless, but longing to get this project going. I carved this stripe today and imagined it overlaid in red on pink. An owl hoots outside, reminding me it's late. I'm going to sleep well now. I've started. This feels exciting. And this was some of my initial thoughts. I'm working on a new fabric collection and this is where I began. Next up is Amy Shukra. She's a fantastic artist. She loves painting mothers and babies and she does still lifes like this and I love it when she includes fabrics like our tablecloths. Um, she also, look, this is so great, all her little sketches and drawings. She's working on a project I know about Cornwall at the moment. Can't wait to see her, her landscapes of that. So inspired by the beautiful fabric, I couldn't resist setting up a still life with some of the objects I've been drawing recently. Pine cones, limes, quince, okra, jugs, teapots, and rock and plates, along with my tools, pastels, and the moon, and some Molly Marne fabric, which is in fact this one here. Isn't that lovely? Another one by me. Um, I love doing little block printed prints like this and I think it's a sweet idea to try and keep a memory of them. I never keep copies of my work, so I'm gonna try and keep as many as I can in, in one of these books. Then we go to the wonderful Gabby Deeming from Daydress. I love her entry. She's done it really like a scrapbook. It's her drawings, her bits of fabric. There's even a little button here, which is one of the first buttons that she used on her first range of dresses. And look at these amazing watercolour pattern ideas for her next collection. She's just come back from Jaipur actually, and I can't wait to see what she brings. Thank you, Gabby. Another Molly Marn, um, spring. I really sense things going on around me in colour. And these colours to me really make me think of spring. Emma Bridgewater. It's incredible to have Emma Bridgewater in here. She's such a hero of mine. Um, she has been really clever. It's showing how her patterns would work on some of her ceramic ideas. Um, I met Emma when I was in Jaipur and we, we were both lone travellers and had dinner a couple of times and it was absolutely wonderful to meet her. I know she's working on some block prints as well out in Jaipur and we can't wait to see those. Um, but I love the way she's done this entry. Another one of mine, um, love playing with colour and pattern and repeat pattern and Islamic design works really well with block print. I did that one back in March. Oh, and then we move on to the absolutely amazing Nisha Crosland. Um, I was blown away when I opened up these pages. She calls this talking tulips. It was one of her first ever textiles design she did back in 1977. 
um, when she was 17 years old. She's used gouache to paint this. It's an absolute treasure. I mean, really, it should be framed, but we're so thrilled with that entry. Thank you, Nisha. Oh, this one's great. So this shows how you could have dried flowers stuck in the book forevermore, which is just such a lovely idea. These were done by the Esme Flower Studio girls, Jess and Ali. I love that. They're, they're one to watch in the floristry world. This is fun. This is Holly Freen. She has just done the most brilliant, brilliant entry. Look at this. It's so vibrant and clever. I love how she's cut the paper. Uh, it's got real energy to it. And she does the female form so brilliantly. Look at this one. I love the flying nude, Holly. Now we go to my mum, prolific artist, Celia Lewis. She's done quite a few entries here and it shows she, she, she works really fast and she works in mixed media. This is a lovely lino print um, of some honeysuckle and a peacock. And then this one is a lino printed jug and she's hand drawn the sweet peas. It works really well. This is a duck called a teal. We had a dog named Teal. And then this one, she did this one. We had the idea of it on a Sunday afternoon and she drew it, carved it and printed it within about three hours of the idea. It just shows how fast she works, how brilliant she is. Moving on, my daughter wanted to do an entry. We'd been up in London. I had various meetings and she was on holiday, so she came with me and we met Lulu Guinness. And she was so inspired by her and Lulu was so kind to her that she's drawn this pair of lips that's a very Lulu Guinness thing and she's written by Lani Mann and I and a mouth. The mouth is inspired by Lulu Guinness. So thanks Lulu, it's just so important for young people to be creatively inspired, so I'm very grateful. Next we've got an entry by my great friend and incredible artist Lottie Cole, um, even has really yummy writing. She did this in July and again she's stuck in, she's done a sort of idea of using book papers and all the people who might have had a book paper. It's rather fun. And then on this page, she's written a, uh, written in a poem by George Meredith and drawn an incredible, she's so good at her interiors and I love all the kind of Chelston effect around the side. And the poem says, a wind sways the pines and below not a breath of wild air, still as the mosses that grow on the flooring and over the lines of the roots here and there. The pine tree drops its dead, they are quiet as under the sea, overheard, overheard rushes life in a race as the clouds the clouds chase and we go and we drop like the fruits of the tree even we even so probably haven't read that brilliantly but what a beautiful poem here's a collage piece with even with live um, plants in it by mary grant and she also does this incredible pastel uh, sort of moody night drawings which i rather love look at that so evocative of sort of walking home late at night in the dark without a torch. This is by my great friend Claire. She's so clever. She cuts birds out of glass. And these are some ideas that she's put in that could become glass cuttings. Um, she's also recently done some block prints and created a range of wallpapers, which are absolutely beautiful. Love this entry by Lulu Guinness. Uh, really bold and wonderful. It's Lily of the Valley. Dear Molly, an early sketch for a block print. Well, we've got to turn that into a block print, Lulu. We really must. It's brilliant. And last, but certainly not least, is the most amazing entrance by Kath Kidston. Um, I'm so thrilled that she agreed to do this. She really is one of my absolute heroes. It says here, inspiration in our studio comes from all sorts, books, travel, pictures, archives, drawing, and of course, roses in their various shapes and guises. This page is made up from her pin board, which I just think is so great. Roses in India, her favorite t-shirt, a rose is a rose is a rose. And this is so lovely and I shall treasure this really forever. Kath Kidston for Molly. Thank you, Kath. So there we go. That's the whole um, book so far. There's so many more pages and we certainly won't let it, you know, stop having entries put in it yet. There's many more to come. So that's it for now. I mean, what incredible, incredible entries by so many absolutely brilliant women that I completely adore and are inspired by and admire and all those things. I'm so grateful. 
but there are loads more pages and I'm going to keep filling it. It's got to become completely full and it's going to be something I treasure forever. I will keep it wrapped in this fabric. I think this just sort of makes it such an heirloom piece and a wonderful, wonderful reason for us all to have one of these journals and fill it with our loves, lives, passions, desires, sketches, poetry, anything and everything. So do go and get yourself one and start filling it.